Well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. As you likely know, St. Patrick is the patron saint of engineers, and in a sense, also of Alfred University, which ties to our history, um, a pretty big cause for celebration um, through a parade for many decades. Uh, wish we're meeting under different circumstances. Uh, it's virtual, I realize, but appreci we appreciate your willingness to join us. And thank you all for those of you who submitted questions ahead of time. I'm going to provide a brief overview. I have our provost with me, uh, Beth Ann Doby, and our vice president of student affairs, Kim Geyer, and they're going to help me respond to the questions you've submitted. We'll tackle many of the questions in the overview, and then we'll go through the others that have been submitted in greater detail. And then uh, we'll be open to questions that uh, you submit uh, through this webinar. If we can't address them in the next hour, uh, we will be posting a fact, a fact sheet uh, to our website later today, and we will keep uh, addressing the questions as they emerge. Uh, it's very much, most of us have seen the Apollo 13 movie, where a lot of bad stuff happens very quickly, and then you have to deal with it. Uh, Gene Krantz, who is the mission control director in Houston, uh, was famous during that crisis for saying, we got to keep working the problem. And that's what we intend to do. It's a very unusual challenge. It's a very difficult challenge, but we intend to keep working it and doing our university proud. Um, thank you for your willingness to, to help along the way. It's going to take a team effort. The key facts to cover and next steps, and many of these were addressed already in the email of last night. One of the heartening things about working the problem is the extent to which our faculty, staff, students, are rising to the occasion of, go, of remaining virtual for the remainder of the semester. Um, it's got its challenges in terms of do students have access to bandwidth? Uh, do students have access to the smartphones or the devices to be able to receive material? We're developing solutions to those problems. Uh, we're, we have a rich range of offerings, um, uh, senior art shows, labs, theses. So we are going to have to get creative and resilient. We intend to do so from the faculty staff side, and we look for our students the same way. It'll transform us in some positive ways, and will also at the same time make us better appreciate uh, why the educational process at Alfred University is so special. But that's the key thing this week. All the instruction has been virtual. Uh, we're working with each of our faculty to make sure that they reach out to their different course groups, the students they're involved in educating, and uh, promoting uh, creativity and resilience in the educational process given the constraint that we're going to be virtual for the time being. We have not yet made a decision on commencement. We envision doing that over the next month. Uh, regalia has to be ordered ahead of time, uh, so stay tuned on that point. Um, we have, however, canceled honors convocation, any, any uh, group meetings on campus uh, because of moving virtual, um, like hot dog day, et cetera. But for commencement and further activities, whether it's reunion in June, most arts in July, we will keep making those decisions and working that problem as it emerges. We've asked each of our students that are still on campus to move out by this Sunday, March 22nd. Uh, we have had 200 students, roughly, that registered to stay on campus during spring break or indicated that they would like to come back to campus this week. We actually believe it's a far uh, smaller number that have actually shown up or are still remaining on campus. But we are strongly encouraging and requiring our students to move their belongings off campus to basically shelter at home. We will allow for exceptions and hardship cases where a student cannot travel home or other circumstances. Uh, please contact Residence Life at alfred.edu to work with Vicki Gable and our Residence Life team on those exceptions. Uh, we will be providing food service, uh, very much grab and go, attenuated in the Powell Campus Center, so that we minimize, we mitigate the risk of uh, uh, any spread of uh, disease. We will also be providing other services like mental health and wellness, but in a virtual way, again, so that we promote social distancing. We have not 
yet worked out the details on refunding um, residence life uh, room and board uh, for the students uh, with us this term. Stay tuned on that. We need some time to flush out the details. A key step we're now taking is how can we promote best practices social distancing? Um, in the, the epidemiological world, there's something called r naught and it's the rate at which a germ or a virus spreads. Right now, for the coronavirus, it's estimated that r naught is 2.6. And what that means is that each person that becomes infected in turn affects 2.6 other folks. If R0 remains above one, uh, it goes viral, that the epidemic spreads. The higher the number, the more viral. We need to do everything possible on campus to drive R0 to as close to zero as possible. When r naught's one, um, you end up basically flattening the curve, uh, but the key thing will be to go to r not as close to zero as possible through social distancing, staying six feet away from each other, uh, doing everything as virtually as possible. Uh, so even we may look at an option with honors convocation, can we do it virtually? Beth Ann and our administrators, our academic administrators will give some thought to that. Avoiding groups, uh, practicing good hygiene, staying at home, sheltering at home. We've closed the gym, we've closed our museums, uh, we've encouraged individuals to go out for walks or runs, uh, keeping appropriate distance if you're doing that with, with other individuals, making sure you're not touching your face, or washing your hands because this virus stays on surfaces so that we're appropriately disinfecting surfaces and making sure that we don't promote contact. And just when you look at the comparison of what Japan, South Korea, uh, China, Taiwan, Hong Kong have been able to do, they've been able to successfully drive r not below one and have gotten a handle of this virus in terms of when you look at the number of new cases reported. In contrast, uh, you look at what's currently happening in the United States and in Europe, r not is above one. Uh, still not enough social distancing. Uh, the outbreak in Italy, for example, people clamored for keeping the bars open later at night and, and celebrating. Uh, and even there's an article in the Wall Street Journal today about how many people are still showing up at funerals. It, it may be a rich part of the culture, but it, it ends up exacerbating r not and causing greater damage. In the interest of driving down r not, we've banned all guests. Uh, we've banned all university-sponsored travel by faculty, staff, and students. Um, again, all events on campus uh, talked about that. A number of you had questions along those lines. And then quite a few questions as well about faculty staff. Uh, how do we uh, best take advantage of flexible work requirements? Uh, please work with your supervisor. Uh, work that can be accomplished virtually, we will try to explore those options to the max. If there are issues of family leave, medical certification, unemployment benefits, should we get to that point, uh, please work with your supervisor and HR. We want to develop a consistent policy. We're, we're very much right now working that problem, and there will be nuances that emerge. If you feel sick, stay at home. Um, we will work with your supervisor and HR. Again, we want to drive down r not while ensuring, first and foremost, that you and our community stay safe. So let me see what else are we, um, what is the university doing to support the mental health of students, faculty, and staff? Maybe let you tackle that, Kim. Um, the health and well-being of our community is at the forefront of our decision making. We will continue to make informed decisions based on the latest science and what's best to protect the health of all of our members of our community while sustaining the university's central operations in support of our teaching and research mission. Another question was um, students and families and admissions visits. We canceled all admissions visits. We've postponed our open houses. We will be moving our decision date to the earliest June 1st. And there we're going to have to be creative how we reach out to prospective students. I received a wonderful email this morning from biology professor Jean Cardinal about holding virtual tours to encourage biology prospects to see what makes 
that department so special. I know our engineers under Gabby Gaustet, our dean, are working under are working out some similar options. What makes engineering so special at Alfred? Summer term, uh, Bethia. So summer term is open for registration, and we're going forward with summer term at the moment. Again, we'll continue to monitor the situation, but most of our summer term is online, and so students can go ahead and register for it. Another question: If we go on online, will I lose my job or get laid off? Um, we will need to make some changes to schedules, and we'll have to look at which jo job duties are still necessary. But as much as possible, we will seek to preserve the integrity of Alfred University. Maybe let you tackle the next one, Beth Ann. Um, about teaching online. Yeah. Yeah. So we um, are. We have people that are in different kinds of positions and doing different types of jobs. We want to make sure that people have meaningful work and can do the jobs that, that they are assigned to do. Some of these jobs can be done remotely and from home, but not all of them can be. Some of them are front-facing jobs, and so it'll be an individual decision, and you need to work with your supervisors about how to accomplish the best scenario. Um, a number of you asked about flex time. Um, will there be flex time options? We are considering it to the maximum extent possible. Again, it helps drive down or not. Uh, can I temporarily be assigned to other tasks? We will explore those options if my regular job is not needed with students off campus. Uh, will we be eligible for unemployment benefits? Will I lose my medical benefits? Uh, HR and your supervisor and we will work with you on exploring those options if it gets to that point and maintaining your health benefits to the best extent possible. We know schools have been closed, and that's been another aspect of this, this Apollo 13 problem. Can I stay home to care for your child? Please work with your supervisors. We will try to accommodate as best possible flexibility while we uh, figure out how this new normal will best work. But at the same time, we need to be mindful of being consistent across the institution and the work that still needs to be done for the good of the institution. So. Uh, we realize it's uh, especially a challenging problem uh, because of uh, those of you with children and uh, how do we take care of them when they're not in school. Do we have staff resources to put appropriate and safe hygiene cleaning protocols in place? Uh, our staff have been trained. Um, we are looking at uh, ramping up what we can do on disinfectant supplies. If any of you have gone shopping lately, that's uh, a broader challenge. I was at uh, Costco on Sunday up in Henrietta, and it was um, pretty crazy. <laughs> but uh, kudos to them for how they are practicing social distancing. They kept all customers six feet apart using every other cash register. You picked up a cart at the beginning um, that was disinfected, So, and they're trying to stay well stocked. We suspect that uh, once the initial panic buying uh, dies down, that we'll be in better shape uh, with supply chains, but it is something we've got to pay closer attention to. I've mentioned social distancing. Uh, my child's spouse parent has a cold. Am I allowed to work? Uh, our answer is that unless the doctor, your doctor suspects that the illness is COVID-19, you are allowed to work. What do I do if a student, staff, or faculty member seems to be ill is, and is on campus? Please contact HR. I'm Mark Guinan, Guinan at Alfred.edu. Um, tuition refunds, uh, we are looking at uh, room and board. However, tuition we will not be refunding as we switch to the virtual model. Uh, we'll, and room and board talked about uh, details to be determined. I think that's it. We'll open it up to questions. And I guess any comments from Beth Ann or, or Kim? Um, I just want everyone to know that we are committed to uh, helping our students finish the semester successfully. The faculty and staff response has been great. Everybody is up for and figuring out how to move online um, and how to make this work. Um, we're, we, we are mindful of the position that students are in, that many of them have not used an online uh, mode before. Uh, so we're looking at those challenges and how best to respond, how we get help desks uh, up and running in the best way to cover hours for both students and for faculty. So thanks to everyone for really pitching in. Um, 
and we, we are going to figure out how to get all of our students through the semester successfully. I echo what Beth Ann said, and I would also add that our student affairs offices have already been uh, working to make accommodations to be able to offer our services virtually to students. Um, so if you're a student who happens to be on the call, um, please don't panic. We're working to assist you from afar, um, no matter where you are. I mentioned Apollo 13, I mentioned to the administrative team yesterday, there was also a movie, Spaceman, about 30 years ago, where the gist of it was uh, alien lands and ends up falling in love with the local. Uh, Jeff Bridges and Karen Adams were the leads, and one of the memorable lines uh, from that movie is uh, what the alien appreciates about humans is... Uh, you're at your best when things are at their worst. <laughs> so the more we can set an example as faculty, as staff, as students of how we navigate this, remain committed to the transformational experience for students, this is going to be more transformational than we expected. <laughs> uh, given that, and we will learn some positive things again as, uh, along the way, but it definitely uh, will keep us on our toes. Question, Kim, can, can student employees work virtually? Uh, we're working on that. So part, partly this is a matter of federal guidelines and there is a webinar with the federal um, people involved this afternoon so that we will have an answer to that question, uh, but it's really dependent on what they say about the funds that support work study. So we'll, we'll have to get back to you with a definitive response to that question. And there are also accreditation issues where there are practicums in the field and to what extent will accrediting bodies, so we suspect that they will be cooperative, but how do we adjust given that the world right now in the United States is going virtual? We know that the practicums are valuable, but uh, we're constrained right now in the ability to offer them. I have a question about um, is there a defined time for students to pick up belongings from the residence halls? Um, anyone who has been living in a residence hall would have received an email from Vicki Gable yesterday, or last evening really, um, and the deadline is the 22nd, so Sunday the 22nd at 5. However, if you are experiencing a hardship, there is a way for you to respond via that email to let us know um, what your hardship is and so that we can work to accommodate you. Uh, another question that came in is, are we considering pass-fail options? That briefly came up in discussion. Um, the deans are meeting every day this week, and this is one of the questions that's on the table. We have a number of questions that we are working on um, because we can't foresee all the consequences of this movement online, so we're trying to, to gather all that. Um, and this is one of the questions that will remain on the table. Uh, somebody asked how often are buildings disinfected uh, daily. That said, uh, let's keep washing our hands. Uh, I've developed techniques to open doors with elbows and also using the handicapped uh, buttons so that I don't have to touch the door handles. Uh, I joked with the administrative team yesterday that if one of our engineers, maybe with some business students, comes up with a unique hook made out of a composite that uh, COVID-19 doesn't stick to as easily, and that you can open a door remotely, and if 5% of the uh, royalties from the sales of the device go to our endowment, we'll soon have a larger endowment than Harvard and mm -hmm. Yale. So mm -hmm. that's, my, that's our challenge to our engineering and business students, if they can come up with something like that. So another question, is, it, is there a plan to assist students who need tutoring assistance? Yes. Um, so the Center for Academic Success is going to continue all of the services that they offer and they will be working on those remotely. Um, we're also going to be assessing the need of whether we need tutoring beyond that and who we can, can use to um, assist in that tutoring. So we'll make sure that there is the, the tutoring for subject areas and the, the normal kind of tutoring that we uh, provide, but we're also going to think about tutoring that we need specifically for negotiating online modality. Um, I have two questions here that are related to the first about um, obtaining students' belongings um, and when they need to leave. So again, if a student can't make it back to campus by Sunday, um, 
they would need to contact uh, Residence Life via the email that was sent out last night to let us know about the hardship so that we can work to accommodate you. Um, and if you're unable to come back and you need to hire someone to pack your students' belongings, um, you can contact the, I believe they're called AIM Self Storage. Their information was also in the email that was sent last night. They do um, packing, storage, and those kind of um, functions. There were some worries expressed in prior emails about congestion and using Sundays at deadline. Uh, just based on the run this morning, ran into a few parents and students that were in the process of moving out. And then with the exceptions we envision taking place, plus uh, just the sheer small number right now of students we believe still on campus, we think the congestion will not be a major issue. But uh, please work with Residence Life. Uh, we will work to stagger it if need be. At this point, it's not looking to be an issue. Uh, there's another question that's related. Um, yeah, so related to staggering, we have not currently set up a, a schedule for staggering, but you'll notice in the email that uh, we've asked that you notify us when you're coming so that we can keep an eye on how many people are coming mm -hmm. on the same day. And as President Supan said, we're trying to spread that out over this week through Sunday. There's a question um, regarding international students who may be uh, needing to stay on campus and the protocol, uh, should there be an outbreak. We do have a plan in place um, should that happen. And so we would be um, you know, rolling out our plan should we hear that anyone um, has been confirmed or suspected. There is also a place on campus that we have set aside for uh, self-quarantining should we need to do that. Please keep the questions coming. We appreciate uh, your rallying to help us keep working this problem. Um, we didn't choose this challenge, um, but we can choose how we react to it. And since it's St. Patrick's Day, I uh, thought it'd be appropriate for us to close with the words of the Irish blessing. Uh, may the road rise to meet you. Uh, may the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warmly upon our faces. The rains fall softly upon our fields. And until we meet again, may God hold us in the palm of his hand. So thank you for joining. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Let's keep working the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.